How's it going everyone? So earlier today, iOS 18.1 Beta 2 got released and we're checking it out right here on Apple CarPlay because there's been a lot of good fixes that Apple released for this beta update. For instance, now whenever you're listening to media, doesn't matter which source of media you're listening to, rather it's first party with like Apple Music or Sirius XM Radio, like in our case, or even YouTube Music, Spotify, and etc. Now, what was available on the on the first developer beta for iOS 18 is brought back, and that is the freedom to hit record while using your iPhone that's connected to CarPlay and continue listening to your music. So you can actually record an action in real time while also capturing the media that you're listening to. Right? Another new change and fix can be located whenever you have Apple Intelligence enabled. So if you have access to Apple Intelligence, you were a part of the wait list and you got accepted. Now the new Siri animation is fixed on CarPlay. Previously, the ring was only halfway. It was glitchy for some reason, but now we actually have the same unique animation, ring animation with Siri right here. Of course, we did receive the new change for iOS 18 for those that are just tuning in for the first time, where the old school home button is brought back, where it now changed to this icon when you're in your app library and your home page will look like this. So basically, we'll tell you this is your apps and this is back to your home page. Pretty awesome little interesting thing that Apple brought back. It's also, in case you can't tell, it's from like the first generation iPhones as well as the first generation iPod Touch home button. But to enable this record ability, you do have to go on your mobile device. So go into your settings and scroll down to your camera. And in the camera where it says record sound, make sure you have stereo enabled and just enabled allow audio playback. Now you can actually record media and your phone without having it pausing the music. And then if you ever launch Siri with your phone by long holding the power button, there's this new uh, art style. But now moving along, another new change can be located whenever you request Siri to pin like an Apple device. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and request Siri to pin, pin my iPhone. Looking for your iPhone 15 Pro. Now oh, it was actually able to identify my iPhone and it's gonna start pinning it. Yep, it's pinning it right here. That's not what I was trying to show you. Well, this is also another thing I'll show you. The new update for some of these notifications. That's how to find my alert now looks like. I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to try this one more time real quick. Pin my iPhone. Looking for your iPhone 15 Pro. Okay, I give up. So previously, I, I have a bunch of iPhones on my account. So if you have like multiple Apple devices, what was supposed to happen is supposed to pop up a new splash window animation on top showing you the picture of each iPhone. So I, if you have an iPhone 15, 14, and 13, it will actually show their little image next to each other, which I thought was kind of cool. I'll try to insert an image that does work on me again once I'm home and editing this video. But a next change can be located in the settings. If we go into the setting tab right here and go into Apple Intelligence as well as Siri, there's now more settings you can enable. So of course we've had Siri suggestions in our dashboard, but now they brought back the automatic send message ability. So by having this enabled, let me go ahead and recreate what it can do. And then down here, you could decide if you want Siri to blend in behind the uh, app or not. So if somebody would send us a text message as an example, let's just wait real quick. So there's a new animation with the attach profile picture with the app. That's new. When we click on it, Mark said, how working today? Would you like to reply? Yes. What do you want to say to Mark? It's going good, but grammar much? Question mark. Sending. And that little send now will basically give me like a five second countdown. I could cancel or change it, but that's what that automatic send message ability does in case you were new to it. It's been something we had in the past, but Apple did took it off and then re added for this beta update. Maybe it'll try and fix some bugs but you have that ability right there because if that was turned off, it wouldn't automatically send. I had to manually confirm it verbally with Siri or just tap the uh, manual send now icon on the bottom right there. Now, another new change can be located if you actually go into your message apps, right? Yeah, I know I have a lot. Uh, they're mostly spams, so don't worry about it. But when you click on it- What do you want to say to Mark? The reply is no longer the grayed out window on top. It's now located here because Siri intelligence is just taken over at that point. So that's the new reply icon whenever you select on a message to reply 
to somebody on your current contact list. So maybe Apple just has that as like a placeholder in the meantime. Now upon using this, I have noticed there's one annoying bug, and that is whenever you request for like a favorite sport game score stats as an example. So I'm gonna use baseball as an example. Show me the Giants latest score. What sport? The Giants lost to the Tigers yesterday. The final score was five to four. Why are all my teams doing bad? But, uh, so I did this before and then for some reason the scoreboard was glitchy. It was just white for some reason. I guess maybe it was my internet reception, but now it's showing. So just expect minor bugs here. We are after all in the developer beta. Other than that, another new change that I've noticed can be located in the settings once more. If we go back and we go into silent mode where it says mirror iPhone silence, we have more options now, so you can turn on silent mode free. It says your iPhone will not play alerts or system sounds when connected to CarPlay. Your iPhone will still play ringtone, alarm, timers, music, and audio from videos. So we have this option now, or you can just turn off silent mode entirely. Your iPhone will play alerts, sound, system sounds when connected to CarPlay, or you can silent those things, or you can mirror the silent mode so your iPhone silent mode setting will not change when connected to CarPlay, which I kind of prefer now, to be honest. Just more options to, to its users. But in terms of in the new accessibility, nothing new here. You still have voice control where you can verbally just control your head unit by just simply using your voice. You got sound recognition, which will recognize sirens or a car horn. So if you have a hard time of hearing or you're not sure if you heard something right, a little notification will pop up letting you know that possibly sirens are nearby. Procedure with caution, you know. And then voice control works really great. It always had worked really well because there's a new icon right here because it's utilizing the microphone from your vehicle as well as on your mobile device up here. There's like a little icon popping up showing us that a microphone for voice control is enabled. So you could just say things like open YouTube music and it does it quickly. You just can't say it like right after a sentence, but if you like to click on something you see on the screen, you can just say tap super mix and it does it like so. You can even do pause and play. It works extremely well. So aside from like that wallpapers, it remains the same from the previous newly added wallpapers. We got these new ones. You may have noticed it in the background earlier. Uh, Apple did remove some from my understanding, unfortunately, but I really do like some of these newer ones, especially if you have a dark interior car. But it also supports light mode, which I'll show you the preview on how that looks like right now. If I go into settings and go into the appearance tab and select automatic, if we go back on wallpapers, this is how they look like. They all look great. Again, I really like the dark mode focus, newly added wallpapers though, personally, of course, all personal preference. And then of course, if you go into your focus mode, you'll see a new Apple intelligence, which will reduce interruptions using AI. And when this is enabled, you'll see the new uh, icon right here in your focus mode, showing us that Apple intelligence is enabled. So it's gonna be very limited and will only show you urgent notifications that have something like, I need to call you, it's an emergency type of thing. In the subject, it'll pop up. But if it's something like spam email and stuff like that, it won't bug you. But in terms of new icons, we don't have the dark mode icons, unfortunately. Maybe in the next feature update, that will have that, but that there's no promises. And then Apple Maps, unfortunately, we don't have the pinch and zoom ability. You still have to double tap and do this to if you want to like quickly zoom in and zoom out. It's not. It's really buggy on my car. I think it's just my head unit. And if you like to watch YouTube videos, it's still recommended to using like a third party device like what I have right here, which this is how I'm able to use CarPlay and watch YouTube videos right here on my uh, CarPlay head unit. Right now it doesn't have internet connection because I usually turn on my uh, phone's hotspot. But aside from that, there you guys have it. That is everything new for iOS 18.1 beta 2. I'll be sure to reference the complete new changes and such for iOS 18 in the video description down below. But if you'd like to find out more about this like new device that I have installed in my car, which allows me to watch YouTube videos, Netflix, basically a better version of CarPlay, you could go ahead and check out that video over there. It's what I use on my main cars, which allows my passengers to use this head unit to watch movies and such on long road trips. It's actually really reliable. Thank you guys so much for watching.